let's cross to Kiev and speak to our correspondent, Gulliver Krag. Hello to you, Gulliver. What, what more do we know about the strike that happened this morning in Zaporizhia? Well, it was just outside Zaporizhia at a former car sales trading place where groups of people gathered together in order to form columns of vehicles in order to cross from the Ukrainian-held part of Zaporizhia region, which includes the regional capital Zaporizhia, to the Russian-held part of that region and possibly further into Russian-held territory in Ukraine, such as Kherson Oblast or even Crimea. Now, the Ukrainians say that this was to be described as a humanitarian convoy, that these are people bringing humanitarian aid or going to fetch their belongings or their loved ones from occupied territories in order to bring them to Ukraine. We don't know if that is the case of all of the people who were part of this convoy, because there are people who have other reasons for crossing into the Russian-held part of Ukraine. There are some men who try to cross to Europe by passing through the Russian-held part of Ukraine. But what we do know is that all of these people were civilians and that no military target Target near where this convoy was is discernible at all. And so it's definitely a strike that has been particularly deadly in the wake of a number of deadly strikes that have killed civilians in recent days in Ukraine. And obviously, it's a very disturbing development. Yeah, very disturbing and obviously adding to the tensions already over the looming annexation. Yes, uh, I think that's People in Kyiv certainly do have the jitters to some degree, particularly about the threats of using nuclear weapons if Russian territory is attacked, when Russia is just about to declare a whole swathe of Ukrainian territory to actually be Russian territory. Obviously, people are wondering what the implications of that might be. Um, one thing that people can take some small measure of reassurance in is that actually the annexation itself is perhaps not going to be officially finished today, because what happens today is that Putin signs documents that then have to be sent to Russia's constitutional court. It seems that they're doing this in a very procedural way, perhaps in order to give time to Ukraine or its Western allies to respond to whatever threats the Russians may be making by their private channels. Perhaps they're making more specific threats or issuing more specific ultimatums, so they haven't done that publicly yet. Anyway, the public front that is being presented by the Ukrainian leadership is absolutely one of defiance, not recognizing these annexations, not recognizing these uh, pseudo referendums, and promising to continue with counteroffensive operations to retake these territories. That said, Zelensky has called special meetings of the uh, um, general staff of the armed forces and the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine for later today, and they have said that they will have some announcements to make after those meetings. All right, Gulliver, thank you very much. Gulliver Krag reporting from Kyiv.